It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ha! It's Feedback Friday, and nobody's in the co-pilot seat. Momo slept for like three and a half hours during my Twitch stream yesterday. It was an epic cat sleep. Like, he barely moved for three and a half hours. Um, and I, I beat the Radiance on Hollow Knight. It turned out I didn't even have the fully upgraded nail. So that's pretty awesome and kind of like, oh god, I made it harder on myself than it needed to be at the same time. If you like the content that is to follow or you like any of my content, if you've liked the videos this week, so on and so forth, though nothing got demonetized this week. Weird. Anyway, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. The patrons got my theory about why people are hoarding toilet paper this week. I'm not going to say more. That's what the Patreon video was this week. So this was a tough week to do Feedback Friday because there were there were quite a few comments, um, but they were all over the place and it was sort of difficult to summarize, which is good. There's a lot of like good stuff to just go and read on your own. But it made it hard to figure out which to pick. Um, and so uh, I went with somebody, first time commenter I'm reading, uh, a guy by the name of David Moore. He said on the, are gamers actually less sexist than normies? He said, interesting perspective, question. It's a given that there are issues in gaming communities of harassment of female gamers simply for being female. Is your argument then that it is unfair to extrapolate and project this behavior onto the gamers label where these problem people are simply misogynistic gamers? I would say it's twofold. One, yes, there are misogynistic gamers. That does not mean that all gamers are misogynist. Um, I would even argue that I suspect that... Well, it, there was actually one study. I don't know if it's been uh, tossed out for problems with the methodology. A lot of gaming studies have been lately, so I've been having trouble keeping up. But there was a study that the people who are assholes in that way are actually the less good players that the really, really good players didn't harass. They were too busy playing the game. Uh, on the other hand, I, I would like to point out that men get harassed in gaming, sometimes just because they're men. I have seen it happen. I have seen, you know, the cis male tears stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying that it happens as often. I have no idea. I, I am just saying I have seen it and, you know, let me put it this way. Any other label, a lot of female lawyers, for instance, are subject to harassment by male colleagues. Does that mean that we just assume that all male lawyers are misogynist? No, we don't. A few bad apples make, you know, make things miserable for a large number of people because one person who's essentially a piece of shit, they don't just target one person. They target everybody of that type that they encounter. So yeah, I, I one of the things I, I push back against hard is this idea that there's something inherently misogynist about being a gamer because I'm a gamer. Like if, if you watch my Twitch channel, you see, I'm just not somebody, I'm not just someone who plays games. I am a gamer. At one point, I, I actually beat the Radiance on Hollow Knight, the final, the final boss until the DLC. Um, I actually beat the boss not while I was streaming. So I went back and beat the boss again. And one person in chat said, why are you doing this if you've already beaten the boss? And another person in chat said, because she's a gamer. There are just certain things that come with the territory. And so I push back hard that, first of all, the gamer identity is inherently male, but also that there is something inherently misogynistic about playing video games, about people who play video games. Um, so... Yeah, I think that a big mistake that the gaming media made was to attach misogyny 
to the gamer identity instead of saying, this isn't our community, this isn't gaming, these people got to go, let's all work together to tell people, either tell them to cut it out or if that's not working, if that's just encouraging them, find some way to social distance them. Um, you know, find some way to isolate them, find some way to be rid of them. If if a bunch of people who just want to be fuckwads want to be fuckwads together, that's not bothering anybody. But let's find a way to make the experience be able to be free of fuckwads if, if we choose. Now, obviously, the best way to do that is to play with friends and friends of friends, though that's not... That's not a guarantee. I've played with, especially, and I don't know why this is. This is just my my personal anecdote, and I'm not saying that this is true across the board. But when I have someone, another female friend who likes games, and then I end up playing with the husband, for whatever reason, the husband turns into this massive fuckwad. I don't know why. But that's, like I said, that is just my experience. I'm saying it because it's funny, not because I believe it's true across the board. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a major mistake that the so-called enthusiast press made in gaming because the enthusiast press is oddly not very enthusiastic about the gaming medium. They seem to want to, like, tie games into political stuff that... There's a huge disconnect between the game's press and the people who make games in this regard. Because I, I remember one, one person uh, who makes games said, games exist in the realm of art. And we need to keep thinking about games as art. Not games as politics, not games as propaganda, games as art. This is a particular story about particular people who make particular decisions with or without the input of the player. That's all it is. There's a difference between saying this is the story I want to tell and this is the partisan slant I want to put on it. And I think unfortunately too often those things are confused. Um, I, I think that sometimes gamers are judged. And I, I think this... Um, this happened back in 2014, 2015 in the controversy that shall not be named. Um, there was this presumption that, um, gamers were somehow right wing. And so that perpetuated this misogynist harassment narrative when I haven't found gamers as a group to be more right-wing than the general population. Some gamers are right-wing, some gamers are left-wing. You're talking about a hobby enjoyed by millions and millions and millions and millions of people. There's going to be a pretty wide cross-section. And that's the thing. Like, gaming isn't like other things that are considered niche. I don't even think gaming should be considered a niche anymore, but unfortunately we're not there yet. Um, you know, we, if you're talking about types of literature, if you're talking about, um, you know, certain hobbies, those, those tend to be user bases of much fewer people. And so there's sort of more of a homogeneous quality regarding the way people think. Whereas video games, you know, encompass everybody. You know, just the way movies and television do. Like, not every person who goes to the movie sees every movie. And not every person who watches TV sees every TV show. Of course not. There aren't enough hours in the day. Um, and it's the same thing. Just because someone's a gamer. I mean, you know, we were having a discussion on Twitch. And there was somebody there who, like, utterly hated Doom. And, like, I love the Doom games. Doom, Doom 2016. And they were like, I was terrible at it. I had a terrible time. And it's like, okay, then it's not your game. You know, she is no more or less a gamer than I am. You know, somebody who plays RPGs or is no more or less a gamer than somebody who plays shooters or somebody who plays city builders or somebody who plays The Sims. Um, I don't know about that one. I'll have to I'll have to sit with that one and figure it out because there's no way you can win The Sims. There's no way you can beat The Sims, but 
enough about my vehement hatred of the sims i hate the sims um but but it was funny because one of the things that got um almost as much traffic as a regular video was this clip that a viewer called uh Kotlalish clipped of me i I joke sometimes very inappropriately when I'm doing hard par parts, parts of gaming because it helps me have fun instead of being stressed and I need to stay chill. Like the secret to really difficult games is to not let your adrenaline get the best of you. You have to get into like a zone where you're not feeling the intensity. Like for people who claim they game to blow off steam, like that is not what very hard games are for. Very hard games is like, a struggle against your own adrenal glands, right? You have to like freak out and then chill. That's the only way to get through it because you have to be very methodical in what you're doing. Um, and so part of the way I do that is to make jokes. And so I made this joke about, cause you know that the typical final boss is like three waves and each one is worse than the last. So there's this goddess called the Radiance at the end of Hollow Knight. And um, I said, oh my God, this boss fight is feminism. This fight is feminism. Three waves, each more painful than the last. And somebody clipped that and I put it up. And that got like, not quite, but it's one of my more successful like Twitch clips to date. And I'm sure some people will see it and get offended, but it was just a joke. And as far as I'm concerned, if you can't joke about the things you like, especially the things you feel strongly about, you're too close to it. And I believe that of anything. Um, you have to be able to take a joke or you're not having a healthy relationship with something. I'm gonna use that to segue into the Dungeons and Dragons Guide to Empathy video. Uh, because pretty much the general consensus about the GameStop stuff is people have said they have never had that experience with GameStop, which I found very funny. Um, but uh, um, most people are like, yeah, GameStop's dead. And that's too bad. But at the same time, um, maybe we need to move to a model where gaming stores are independently owned and operated the way comic book stores are. Maybe chain stores just aren't the way to do that. Unless GameStop gets its head out of its ass and starts being a fun place to shop, I maintain. Um, but uh, moving on to the Dungeons and Dragons thing, somebody, one person, and this is a, a very, very frequent commenter um, and, and high quality commenter, um, who said that Dungeons and Dragons is no longer a good, um, a good place for empathy because too many people power game. And I was like, holy crap, is that true? And I mean, okay, the thing about D and D not the video games, the actual like books. Um, I've got some of them back there. Oh, you can't see them. Um, the thing about Dungeons and Dragons is that your adventure, your game time is only as good or as not good as the dungeon master and the players make it. And there are ways to get around power gaming. And the fact that people are coming into Dungeons and Dragons wanting to power game. Now, okay. When you're a noob in D&D, &D, everybody kind of does that. Um, you you want to be awesome. Though I was cured of that really quickly because uh, I started as um, a mage, not knowing that's one of the harder classes to play early on. Um, and the guys I was playing went easy on me and gave me like rerolls and stuff like that because I was brand new to the game. So I did not feel powerful. And I did not seek to feel powerful in part because they went easy on me and I know they went easy on me. Uh, this was when I was like in grade six, to be clear. Um, and it, it, it's so, I think back on that now and I think that that's probably a character defining thing because there was no like, 
oh, they liked me or I liked them. It was just all like, like, like. Um, it was just a whole bunch of people who wanted to play a game and I liked the look of the dice. And they were like, you want to play? And I'm like, sure. And it was totally just friends, right? There was no romantic or sexual tension or anything. It was the sixth grade, but I guess that happens in the sixth grade now. Yee. But it was just a bunch of people playing a game. And so I never came into it from the power gaming mode because I got killed by a will-o'-wisp the first time I played. Um, so it was more the experience and learning the game and everything like that. Um, if people are power gaming, that ain't cool. And so I just want people to know there are ways in Dungeons & Dragons of nipping power gaming in the butt. Um... I mean, the, the, the head of Vecna is an in-joke that was was sort of part of that. Um, but uh, yeah, Dungeons & Dragons, when pr played properly, does not encourage power gaming. It encourages collective storytelling. So I hope that that commenter uh, encounters other groups that... Because, I mean, I've, I've played instances of Dungeons & Dragons where... It, it was deliberately designed so that there was no combat. It was all the, it was basically like wisdom, intelligence, and charisma stats because we were like, these don't get used enough. Let's do like a towny D and D setting or like a mystery or something like that where we don't use dexterity. Came into it some um, fortitude sometimes in places or constitution. Sorry, wrong wrong system. Um, but it, it was, it was to use those sort of stats that tend to get put on the back burner. And that's the cool thing about D&D is, is it's a very adaptable system, but that also makes it a super complex system. And if you've got the wrong group, then yes, people power game. And I agree. That's not fun. Um, speaking of which, I don't know why this made me think of it. People actually defined a Stacy, a Becky, and a Karen to me. And we were talking about it in Twitch. And we agreed that some Stacys and some Beckys grow up to be Karens. Um, but a Stacy is basically like one person pointed out said when we were explaining it, oh, a Heather. And it's like, yes, that's my generation. The movie Heathers. Um you may not know what it is, but it was a Winona Ryder, Christian Slater movie that was basically the mean girls of his day. Here's the Um, But um, so the Stacy is like the popular, pretty cheerleader type girl. Um, a Becky is a, a woman who's basically normal, completely unremarkable in every way and doesn't realize the complete lack of not specialness. Um, and yes, Momo. And uh, a Karen is the that that woman who asks for the manager and and makes um, service employees' lives a living hell, and not ask for the manager because there's a good reason. Ask for the manager over the slightest little thing. Um, and I realized because you know people watch my Twitch content from from numerous countries, how difficult it is to explain some of these things because if you don't have certain you know baked in reference points it's like what you know so it's uh to care about this stuff too much probably makes you a becky in some ways and i realize that i know more male karens than female karens in terms of that ask for the manager i don't know if that's a thing i don't know if there's a, a male name for karens but um yeah i'm gonna leave Feedback Friday there for now. Because like I said, if I, if I go beyond this tier, it becomes, whoa, cat hair. It, it becomes just massive and I don't want to do another super long video this week. Um, but uh, I do want to say, I know that stuff is getting really scary um, in the US with coronavirus. If you are in Italy, oh God, you guys got it worse than anybody else right now. Um, you know, my heart goes out to you. My thoughts are with you. Um, but in the U.S., it, it is like they're canceling all this stuff and it's getting scary and all that stuff. And and uh, some people don't know that in, in the Toronto area, in Ontario, we lived through SARS 
in 2013. And it was kind of similar, though stuff didn't get shut down the same way because it wasn't quite as, as communicable. Um, but we didn't know what was going on and people were dying and it was really scary. So like, I know that feel. Um, it hasn't been as nuts in Canada yet, but I, I just want to say that all the, the, um, just, just to put people's minds at ease, um, because remember I said about that, that really hard boss fight, you have to find a sense of calm. You can't let that adrenaline get the best of you. It's the same thing in, in things like this. Um, the goal is to take the strain off the hospitals so that everybody's not getting sick at the same time. That's it. That's why we're doing all this stuff to make sure that for the people who do get really critically ill, there is enough staff and equipment to give everybody the highest quality of care. This does not mean that COVID-19 is a uniquely like dangerous disease. It does not mean you will die if you get it. It's just an attempt to make sure that people don't die needlessly because the services aren't there. So if you're young and healthy, I have asthma, so I'm actually in a risk group. Um, but if you're young and healthy, don't go to the hospital the minute you have a sniffle, okay? Call either your doctor or some sort of community health service. I don't know what it's like in the U.S. because your healthcare system sucks. Uh, we have telehealth lines up here. But call them before you go into a doctor. They may tell you to stay home. Uh, if they tell you to stay home, do so. Um, and just, this is going to be around for a while because what flattening that, that um you know pandemic curve means is it's going to be around for a while likely into you know august maybe september um they canceled d3 um i kind of feel like nothing was lost personally that that's my question should i talk about e3 being canceled there's everybody just meh moving on um but yeah i just i just want to say to people like don't worry but do please follow the instructions that various community health services, public health services are giving because, um, you know, we're all gamers. We want to be able to be sort of heroic at times. This is your opportunity to do so. Um, and I know gamers have that altruistic streak in us. So, you know, I know you guys are the best and, and you'll do what you have to do. Just uh, follow the instructions. Um, stay off certain places in the internet that are ripe, ripe with disinformation or misinformation. I always get that wrong. But um, yeah, just basic common sense. Avoid large groups. That doesn't mean you can't go out for dinner with a couple of friends. Uh, large groups of like more than 200 people. Uh, that kind of stuff. Just common sense. Wash your damn hands and we'll be okay. Okay, everybody have a great weekend. Um, thanks for watching. Oh, wait, once again, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. If you are interested in my theory about why hoarding toilet paper is going on. Thanks for watching.